And with that out of the way, let's go ahead into this first segment, which is going to be about Bronny. And as you guys know, Bronny James, you know, he's probably the most popular rookie in this entire draft class. And But that doesn't necessarily mean that he's popular for the right reason, right? I mean, we all know why he's popular. It's because he is LeBron James's offspring, and this was LeBron's dream for his, like the ever since he got, um, he started to get into the older phase of him playing basketball, and there was a lot of anticipation for Bronny playing in his first NBA game, and there was a lot of anticipation for him playing in the season. But as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, Bronny is not really the best player and definitely not the best player in this draft class, let alone one of the best players in the NBA. He's just he's just not ready for it yet. And I think the Lakers realize that, and so they moved him down to the G League, where obviously, you know, the G League, it's for these players who aren't necessarily all that good. Like, they're not really... They're professionals, yes, but they're just not good enough to make it to the NBA. And, I mean... Bronny got his moment with his dad in the first game, and ever since then, that was basically about it. He scored one bucket with the Lakers, from what I can remember, and, I mean, clearly that's just not enough for the, um, for the Lakers to even, like, you know, consider him to be in the rotation, right? And the, the Lakers, they've been in talks with moving him up and down in the G League, so, you know, they'll be, he'll be in a G League game for one time, and then he'll move him, they'll move him up for a game in one point, and then, you know, they'll keep moving him up and down. That's really just, you know, the treatment that he gets for being LeBron's son, honestly. And I know a lot of you guys are like, you probably think that um, I'm rather, you're probably questioning why I've been a little bit optimistic with Bronny, and his progressions in the NBA because personally I'm I I do agree with the fact that he probably should not have been drafted this early however I will say that I think the criticism towards him and the criticism like you know around him is a little bit unjust because while I'm not going to say that Bronny James has played great at all in his rookie campaign I'm not going to sit here and act like there haven't been many rookies who have not been play- who have been playing good. Like this entire draft class is so so weak, it's not even funny right now. And nobody in this draft class is playing outstanding and no one is in this draft class is playing well. And in fact, the only real um outlier so far that I've seen in this draft class is Zach Ede. I mean, he's been the one that I've like I sort of expected this good of um production coming in from Zach Ide like he's not he's obviously not playing like you know the best that we've seen him play you know considering how what what he did Juan Purdue was rather impressive but again he's still a rookie and he still needs time to adjust that I completely understand but what he's doing in you know these first few games is nothing short of impressive honestly like it's really really good but that cannot be said about most of the rookies in this draft class, and I mean, especially the top two picks. Now, I know Zachary Rasatcher, he played phenomenally in the most recent game, but that was just one game. Every other game, he's been incredibly inefficient. Same with Alexander Saar. And those guys, they haven't gotten nearly as much criticism or media attention as Bronny James has. And I'm here like, well, what do you expect? Bronny was drafted in the second round. These two were drafted in the first round, number one and the number two picks, and they're still they're still playing bad. But of course, they don't get any sort of media criticism from it. They don't get any kind of attention from it. It's all focused on what this guy is doing, and I just think that's a little bit unfair because again, the expectation for him from the start wasn't already that high, and I, that, like if it was high, he would have been drafted in the first round, but he wasn't for a reason, like. I just don't understand why people were so critical about him. But again, he has been assigned to their G League affiliate South Bay, and sources told ESPN, as he is expected to debut for the team on Saturday against Salt Lake City. I'm sure the G League viewership is going to increase dramatically when he's, um, since he's going to be playing. And... Really, I feel like this is the best move for um, the Lakers and the best move for Bronny as of right now because, as we know, he's not ready. He's just not ready for the NBA. I don't know what you expect. He literally came off of one season where he was suffering cardiac arrest, and and now he's back, and he was back playing basketball for that one year. Of course, he's not going to be at his best, but 
playing in the G League, it's definitely like a good start for him. So that way he can develop that basketball skill that he needs before he becomes a legitimate NBA player. And James, he's going to be on the Lakers roster for Friday's game against Philly. And then he's going to rejoin South Bay, according to um, sources. So again, it's going to be a back and forth thing with Bronny. The organization's current plan is for James to play in only G League home games as he shuttles between the Lakers and South Bay, sources have said. Lakers coach J.J. Redick said last month that the plan for Bronny is to move between the Lakers and South Bay, and it has always been the plan since day one. So they've always wanted to do this with Bronny, and I guess that makes sense. You know, you you want him to get the experience of playing with... um mediocre players and i say mediocre like because you know compared to the nba they're not the they're not the same kind of athletes but i also don't want to disrespect them and saying that they're bad because you have to be really good to be in the g league of course but so that's why i'm just calling them mediocre for all of you guys who um who are wondering like exactly why i'm saying the word mediocre because i don't want to disrespect most of the players in the g league they're trying to fight for a roster spot and obviously you have to be really good to be in the G League so I'm not going to say that they're bad I'm just going to say that they're mediocre and they're not the same caliber kind of players as NBA players that's just a fact there's a reason why they're in that league and as James and his representative from Clutch Sports Rich Paul we all know who Rich Paul is discussed development throughout his pre-draft process with NBA teams sources told ESPN that the concept of G League play was welcome and those sources said that Paul advocated for a standard contract, not a two-way deal, um, before the draft, while making it clear he and James were fully open to the development process. And players drafted in the mid to late second round typically spend time in the G League anyway, gaining coaching, game repetitions, and structure in their rep- respective teams and respective programs and during the 2023-2024 season 23 of the 28 players selected in the second round of the 2023 draft class spent time in the g league so this is not really like a new thing that um these um that's going on and this is not necessarily like you know new treatment coming in for lebron for Bronny, and you know the fact that lebron is his father on the on the lakers roster this is just this is essentially the norm and he's the 50 as we know he's the 55th pick in this year's draft and he's appeared in only 4 games this season for the Lakers. One of them came in the Lakers season opener which, you know, was the first time that a father and son duo eventually played in the NBA and by far the best father son duo in NBA history, hands down, no question about it. And <laughs> one of them came in the Lakers um, season opener, October 22nd, when LeBron and him made history by becoming the first father-son duo to play in an NBA game at the same time. Again, the best father-son duo in NBA history. There is no question about that at all. And really, this is just to be expected with Bronny and just the way that he's been playing and he, he still needs time to develop. There's nothing wrong with needing some time to develop, and there's nothing wrong with it. So I don't see a problem with it. I'm sure most of the people who just completely despise LeBron are going to see a problem with it and be like, oh, his offspring is nowhere near as good as he is. Of course not. I mean, it's LeBron compared to his son. It's not a, it's not a fair comparison. But aside from that, that's all that I have on the first segment. So, you know, basically just an update on Bronny and the situation going around with the Lakers. And now in the second segment, we're going to move on to some NBA rumors going around, primarily um, talking about the Warriors and how they've been playing so far. Now, this is this is a rumor that happened inside their own locker room. So I'll be right back after this short break to discuss it. Be sure to stay tuned if you guys are interested. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. 
wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the fake shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't hear shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place, all this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it, the noose it fits, some loose shit, a stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip, you choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? 